Bill. How's it doing for you? It's doing well. Yeah, I remember you from the uh, film festival. That's right. We spoke on the uh, opening night uh, red carpet. Of, uh, yes. There. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> well, I'm I'm sure you had a enjoyable time, but uh, congratulations on your documentary, Almost Home, Life After Incar Incarceration. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was so great to uh, premiere it, you know, last week and the response was fabulous. So we were very happy. Most most excellent. I mean, it it it, it is one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world and uh, showing it to that crowd. I, I am pretty sure there was a lot of reactions to this film. There was for sure. Wow, such an amazing venue, you know, uh, sounded and looked beautiful and the response of the audience. Uh, yeah, it was exactly what we hoped for. So tell us uh, what actually sparked uh, this uh, conversation to do the documentary in the first place. Yeah, well, it was uh, something that uh, we wanted to uh, kind of invest in a social issue documentary and uh, started researching it and like I, like so many people, there's misconceptions we have about the community, a lot of things I didn't really understand. So we started researching it and seeing just all the different challenges that the individuals face, right? Like if you have so much difficulty getting a job and getting housing, it's it's hard to succeed. Like your basic needs have to be met. And so, you know, looked into it. I didn't really see another prominent documentary that you talked about life after incarceration. And so I saw a story there as to, what happens once they get out? What are the tools that they need to succeed? And there's this program at Palomar Community College, you know, in San Diego, that just was a great example of how to help people transition into a world that was very foreign to them, something they wouldn't really think of in a community college environment. So for so many of them, you grew up in an environment where it was much more likely to join a gang, right, than it was to go to college. Uh, most of their friends or family had been incarcerated. When you grow up with that, uh, that's what you know, and that's kind of your reality, just like many of us grew up with no expectation we were going to go to college. It wasn't really a question, right? So you saw taking this group into an environment that was so foreign to them, but the foundation was there. They were given the tools to succeed, so much support where many of them said that they felt supported and understood really for the first time in their lives by the community that's at the, the college. And that's transformative. Like you see the power of that. If you've never had anyone believe in you in your life, tell you uh, what's possible, um, it, that alone is so encouraging and inspiring. And the success stories that we saw from these individuals in the program uh, it, it just clearly became a, a film that I thought could have an impact. So, um, so correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, oh, well, correct, correct me any, anyways, is I just want to know yeah. is, uh, how you first heard of, uh, transitions. Did you come across of it or are you a local in that uh, Northern, uh, San Diego County area? Yeah, so I actually work at the college. So we're in a very unique situation. We have our own uh, TVS, uh, TV facility that's kind of like a PBS style facility. And we do documentaries, instructional videos. So I worked at the college, but I wasn't even as aware. You know, I knew a little bit about the program. Uh, so it was a no brainer once we started researching it. It was right there. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it ended up being great. I, I have to say Palomar College is one of the largest community colleges in the state. So uh, <laughs> it is. And we have a great program that goes back, you know, uh, 20, 30 years. And we've won, you know, 30 some odd Emmys over the years. So we're really lucky. We, we This is my 12th documentary I've been able to uh, create there. So, yeah. Well, tell, tell me how, um, what was the process of uh, working with the college on a documentary like this? You just basically pitched it and they just agreed it, or, I mean, is there were hoops? Yeah, yeah, I was talking through the administration, the president at the time, um, really getting a handle on what the story was and what our intentions were. Um, but yeah, the support was immediate from them. Like, it, it's just such a great success story for the college and community colleges in general, right? Like community colleges are designed to serve our community. We take everyone, right? So it's a perfect example of the power of a community college 
to target communities that really aren't addressed in traditional four-year universities. And we take an approach of we support everyone no matter what their background is. And so the success stories of that, showing what's possible when they're given the tools to succeed, uh, it, it, it was a, a no-brainer again for a powerful story about the, the, the uh, potential of community colleges to change lives. Now, transitions itself is not a not not a class, but it's like a special program um, targeted specifically for those people um, who who left prison. Yeah, so there's a summer program uh, where it kicks off during the summer, where they have one intensive uh, class that is designed to set them up to succeed for the rest of their academic career. So there there's one course, but then they have. Um, Friday check-ins where they all meet and they have like a network where they support each other. Uh, they try to take classes together. So when they're in other traditional classes with other students, they try to have a cohort of other um, formerly incarcerated students who are in there to support each other. So it's a whole web that is intertwined between different programs on campus that kind of connects it, but it all starts off with this summer program uh, which you see in the film is where Richie was selected to give a speech, you know, and and uh, it, it's really to kick off to the rest of their academic career. So the the beauty of the program is even if they don't continue on and get a two year degree or four year degree, so many have said just going through that initial program changed their lives because of the counseling they received, because of the support, um, because they were able to kind of. Uh, challenge themselves and some of the issues they've had their whole lives and address them in a way they haven't before, that it, it helped them gain the confidence to move on and get jobs uh, and things like that, uh, which they felt that they they were stuck in that perpetual cycle and this broke the cycle. Now, there must have been uh, dozens of um, students enrolled into this uh, program that when you when you actually start filming. Could you talk about the selection of the few students to uh, highlight and how you convinced them to be part of this documentary? Yeah, and that, that was a challenge. We didn't have as much time as I would have liked. You know, normally you'd spend months getting to know them, trying to build that relationship. Uh, we got a late start to the project. The summer program was already starting, so we only had about a month. We started filming not knowing who our subjects were those first few weeks. Interviewing process, we had criteria. So we needed somebody who was currently on parole, currently struggling with uh, housing, currently struggling with finding a job. So uh, we knew story-wise that was really important. We wanted somebody who looked uh, like what you think of as the poster child for being incarcerated. That's when we, luckily we found Richie checked off all of those boxes. We had a few other people that we had pursued. There was, we really wanted a, a, a woman in the film. There was a couple that we tried to include with their story. Their story didn't quite work out. And there was a few challenges, obviously, with time. Um, so we pursued, we researched, we talked with them. And then uh, Louise, our success story, transferring to UCLA, we knew he was going to be a part of it. But like you said, convincing them, that took a little effort. You're, uh, just being honest with them about what we were going to do, what were their goals, what were they hoping to get out of this, right? Because it's hard to share your story. Like, I don't know if I'd want to do it myself, you know, to be honest. Like, it's difficult to, to be that vulnerable. And that, that's the way, you know, I said, look, you know, I, I understand this is challenging and we'll do the best we can to be accurate with your story. Uh, but focusing on what is the end result, and that's bringing attention to these issues, hopefully helping other people not go through this, the challenges that they went through. That was always their motivation is how can they help others? And that there were difficult times where there's a couple times where people stormed off. There's a couple times where there was something we really needed for the story and we were told no. And the film, you know, there's there's things we wish we got that would have improved the film. But you, I did not want to add any more stress to their already stressful lives. So you have to, you have to balance that. I know. I I was actually surprised that you included a uh, certain uh, people's deaths during during the filming. That was a uh, that was remarkable and very emotional. 
I mean, that was really hard for us as filmmakers going through as well, because we knew them and we knew them in a way that, you know, every frame of film we were, were watching over and over and every class that we recorded. So we knew them in kind of a different way. And so it affected us. And then to watch how it affected the community, obviously, was really difficult. But that was the most significant thing during our filming process uh, was how that that changed the whole community. It changed the program and overcoming those challenges. They are representative, unfortunately, of the vulnerability of that community. So that's why it was important to include them, the statistics of those that pass away for unexplained reasons um, is very high uh, for the formerly incarcerated community. So that's one of the challenges that they have to overcome, which is why it was important to include that. Now, the, the challenges of uh, filming during the pandemic um, must must have been quite an ordeal for you because no one, I want to say, no one has experienced, has the experience for that. Yeah, that was a real challenge and uh, was very frustrating. You know, we all look back at it in hindsight, like, wow, how did we, how did we all survive the pandemic, let alone have to film, you know, a documentary in it? Uh, it, it definitely, uh, there were some challenges that uh, the film is worse off because of it, because of, there were so many limitations with getting together, everyone wearing masks. But we overcame it. And, the, you know, one kind of accident that was a positive is they, they weren't getting together as much in person. So there was a lot of Zoom recordings that we had, dozens and dozens of them that, that wouldn't have occurred. And so that was actually very helpful. And people are a little different when they're at home on Zoom. And we captured some really raw, authentic moments uh, that I think would have been different if they were in person. So there's always silver linings, you know, with any challenge. That was one of them for this. There was some benefits that came out of it, but no doubt it was it was very difficult. And not uh, if we had made the film now, it would be a very different film for sure. Well, Bill... Um, you know, what's fascinating when you do these uh, type of life stories and people watch it, we always uh, we always want to know if you're still in contact with them and where are they now? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, luckily, I work on campus and uh, a couple of the people are, all, are like Richie's working on campus. And so I get to see him all the time. All of these film festival events have been so great. We just won a couple of Emmys. They all got to go to the Emmy Awards, dress up. Um, get photos taken. They were all so excited. So they're all doing really well. Uh, you know, Louise is is about to go into a PhD program at UCLA. Uh, Richie got a job. He's doing well. He's going to graduate next year. Um, the community is thriving, and and so that that's the most rewarding thing is to see how happy they are now, how successful they are now, and uh, yeah, I think they'll all have lifelong. Uh, relationships with these people for sure because of the bond that we had uh, during the filming. Most excellent. Well, it's great to hear um, how it is success. So, Bill, before I l let you go here, as audience, more audiences have a chance to watch Almost Home Life After Incarceration, what is the one most important lesson that we should take away with after watching your film? I, yeah, I really think it's it's trying to not judge people, trying to let go of the, the stigma that they have and apply that to many different situations because we are in such a divided country right now and there are so many negative stereotypes in general. If you could embrace and give somebody like a formerly incarcerated individual a chance to not prejudge them and uh, not let your preconceived notions of who you think they are affect your judgment of them, I think you'll be surprised with the results and the world will be a much better place. Well said, Bill. Well, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation about your documentary. And it's a, and it's a pleasure uh, bumping into you again and talking into de greater detail about your film. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Hey, not a problem. Thank you. Bye now. All right. See ya.